The White House is projecting a $1.6 trillion deficit this year. Leading economists and politicians are arguing over whether we need to cut spending or grow our way out of the problem. University of Texas professor of economics James Galbraith is with us now. He says all of this deficit talk is just a distraction. He is joining us right now from Vermont. He was an informal advisor, by the way, to President Obama when the president was running for office. Professor, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Glad to have you with us. How can the deficit be a distraction? I mean, many people are concerned about what they perceive as wasted money in D.C. and this idea that we are just passing down a big mess for our kids to clean up. Well, the people who were uh, pursuing this hysterical line are people who uh, never foresaw the financial crisis. Many of them, in fact, were responsible for it. And people who up until just a few days ago were saying that the economy was recovering just fine and are now having to realize that that's not the case. The problem that we have is a very weak economy with very high unemployment. And under those conditions, big deficits are inevitable. And you can just choose whether you uh, have an active policy that tries to put people back to work and set a new direction for economic growth, or a passive policy in which people aren't working, aren't paying taxes, and you're paying out a lot of relief and unemployment. But, pro Professor, this, there is this idea, though, that we have to pay the piper at some point. I heard you say when you come out of recession, it's normal to have this kind of deficit. But, but when do we get the balance sheet in better shape? Only after we've reformed the financial sector and dealt with the debt burdens that private households are facing and the fact that people's homes are underwater. And so we have people lending, uh, banks lending and people borrowing again. Then we will have economic activity and people will be paying def uh, taxes and the deficits will start to recede. But until then, there is no way you can tackle the deficit problem directly. And the idea that you're going to solve it by cutting public spending or, or raising taxes, for that matter, is illusory. It just simply restricts the economy and uh, gives you the deficit back in a different and uglier form. Professor, to what extent are you looking at what is going on in the U.K. and in Europe? Because that's exactly what we are seeing on the continent. That is to say that public sector employees, their beneficiaries, are accepting cuts, and that is seen as a good thing. Well, it's not being seen as a good thing by the people who are affected directly, and it's slitting the throats of the European economies one by one. Europe has a particular problem is that it doesn't have any central authority that's capable of and willing to come to grips with this, and that's an advantage that we've got. So we don't have to go the European route, and we should not go that route. All right, so, Professor, if, we don't, uh, if we're not in that same position, then what should we be doing? We should be setting a new strategic direction for the economy that will set a path of growth, public and private sector activity, for the next 10 or 15 years. The idea that you can solve this problem with another one or two year stimulus program is, I think, also wrong. We have a long term problem. People's houses, when they're underwater, that, that problem doesn't go away for very readily. So we have to say, okay, what are the big problems we've got to solve? We've got to solve our energy problems, our environmental problems. We have an aging population that should be cared for. We have to figure out ways of doing that efficiently. When we do that, we'll find lots of work for people to do, and tax revenues will start to flow in again. So that's a long list of to do, Professor. I mean, energy, I heard you say the environment and taking care of the aging, but when you look to job creation, our service uh, jobs, that is to say people who are caring for the elderly, are they earning enough to really put that back in the economy? Well, we can work on their wage levels as well. Uh, that's not a bad thing to do either. I mean, people should be paid a living wage to do the useful work that needs doing. Uh, and then we will have an economy that achieves the purposes that we want to achieve. That's, uh, that's the, the right frame of mind to approach this problem, to, in, to take up particular financial numbers, the budget deficit, the deficit, in the debt in relation to GDP. These are, um, these are phantom concerns. You know, in 1945, 46, when the U.S. was the most powerful nation in the world, we had a debt to GDP that was over 120 okay. percent. And it went down over 50 years to 30 percent. All right. It's an optimistic view. We're glad to hear it, especially on a Friday morning. <laughs> professor James Galbraith joining us there. He is a professor at the University of Texas, also an author.